Hey guys, Tina here. Today I'm starting my October wrap up. Uh, I'm actually sticking somewhat close to my TBR and the first book that I read is actually The Magician's Land by Leif Grossman, which is book three in his The Magician's Trilogy. Um, this is a series about a guy named Quentin who realizes that he's a magician and he actually goes to this magical school in the book, uh, in the first book. And he's also obsessed with a series of books about a land called Fillory. And once he realizes that that land is real, his dreams come true. And, you know, throughout the books we see uh, how his story progresses and there's a bunch of other characters and they have to sol solve different problems and, you know, they go on adventures and stuff like that. Mm, this was a great conclusion. Um, it took me a while for to get into this book, but I have, you know, come to realize that that is with, with all of Grossman's books, actually, you know. But once the story pulls me in, I just fly through them. Uh, the books are slow-paced, uh, this one included. Um, so yeah, you know, there's a lot of descriptions, a lot of great metaphors, because Grossman has an amazing imagination. And actually, uh, I was pretty satisfied with this conclusion. I actually have a spoilery review of this book that you can check out if you have read the book or a non-spoilery review of the whole trilogy for those of you who need a little nudge uh, to actually pick it up. You can go check that video out. I will leave uh, them up here and down there. Uh, so yeah, please go do that. So I already weird slightly for my TBR and added another book in and that is What I Thought Was True by Huntley Fitzpatrick. A few months back I read uh, My Life Next Door by the same author and I really loved it. And uh, this is another young adult contemporary summary read. It tells the story of Gwen who lives in this uh, small seaside uh, town and she's part of the regular crowd, you know, the people that actually live in the town and there's, you know, summer people that come and go every summer and there's a huge divide between the two and she never thought that she will have to work for that crowd. Uh, but since, you know, her large family has financial problems, uh, she has to take a job uh, with one of those people. And uh, there's also a boy that she's interested in and trying hard not to be. And there's a lot of misconceptions, misunderstandings, miscommunication, a lot of misses, uh, secrets being kept, white lies being told, and, you know, it's a cute contemporary read. I didn't like it as much as My Life Next Door, but still I would recommend it, you know, if you, if you like these kind of stories, definitely. Um, you know, I picked it up because it's pretty cold here already and I'm already missing summer and I just needed another book like this, uh, you know, to, I don't know, to get me over, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you, you know, wait till next summer, you, it will be perfect. Or if you have summer right now, you lucky people, uh, definitely pick it up and see how it goes. So after my short detour, I went back to my original TBR and I finished listening to The Girl With All The Gifts by M.R. Carey. Now this book uh, disappointed me slightly and I think the major uh, the main reason for that is my own uh, preconceptions and expectations. The thing is I've had this book on my shelves for I think about two years or basically ever since it came out and I have been hearing constantly how great it is and you know how you should not know what it's about just going blindly and um, yeah the thing is a few months back I actually learned that it's about zombies and when you say zombies to me I have certain expectations you know um, you know, Walking Dead and all that. So, you know, I there were things that I expected and uh, it was really different from those expectations. So I think that kind of uh, played with me. So this is about a group of people that live in a post-apocalyptic world and they live on an army base, safely protected from the rest of the world where zombies roam and it's pretty dangerous to live out there. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, and at the beginning of the book we see them um, have the army bases attacked and they have to get away to safety somewhere else and this group is uh, a really interesting mix you have a zombie a teacher a scientist an army man so each has each uh, person each each individual has a certain role and i just liked it how those roles were sort of flipped you know from you know as to what they were at the beginning and what they are in the end uh, and it was really interesting them how they all coped with, with this situation that this book is not uh, plot driven it's more character driven and it's there's a bit more psychology in it I think uh, you know in what I mentioned that how they cope with the situation and how they react and um, all that uh, the beginning was sort of slow for me uh, you know once uh, they have the, once they're on a run it just moves uh, pretty fast uh, but it was an interesting book. Uh, as I mentioned, I think it was my uh, ideas that uh, brought it down for me. 
So if you're into zombies and you want maybe a slightly different take on zombies, I would definitely recommend you go pick this book up. I finished reading The Night Film by Marisha Pestel. Uh, this book started off with uh, Ashley Cordova being found dead. Uh, it's ruled to be a suicide, but Scott McGrath, who is well, used to be an investigative journalist, uh, decides to look into it because he's not entirely sure that uh, that ruling is actually correct. Now, uh, years back, he tried to do a piece on her father. Um, Stanislas Cordova is this famous, world-renowned horror movie director, and there was always he's always surrounded uh, by mystery. You know, nobody's entirely sure how he looks. Uh, you know what he does at his estate, and there's a lot of rumors surrounding him. So Scott decided to investigate, but uh, he did not get far. He got actually burned. He um, was, you know, his career ended. He lost his wife and. Uh, well, his life uh, turned, you know, spiraled kind of out of control, and now he's, um, I think he's kind of restless, and he wants to prove that he was correct, so he does decides to look into this matter. Um, soon he's joined by Nora and Hopper, who each have their own interest uh, for joining him, and they explore uh, the last days of Ashley's life. So this is a murder mystery thriller type of book. Uh, there are some occult elements in it, and at one point I actually thought we're gonna end up in another genre altogether, but uh, we didn't. Um, yeah, I really like the writing. It was really, it just flowed really well, uh, really nicely. Uh, you know, I really liked it. I, it did take me a, a good 200 pages to get into it, uh, but that's mostly because of Scott, because I didn't really like him as a character at the beginning. Uh, but once uh, the other two characters joined him in his search, I actually really started enjoying this book, and uh, it was a fast read after that. Um, the ending, well, we get to learn the truth, but it's sort of still kind of open-ended, and I'm not entirely sure which truth I be believe. So in that regard, I mean, I like it. I like the ending. I just, yeah, you know, I'm not entirely certain what's what to believe but yeah I, I enjoy this kind of, kind of uh, ending so that's fine by me um yeah it was a really enjoyable read i'm really happy that i finally picked it up and it's definitely perfect for halloween time because at some point it was pretty um well spooky in a sense it played with your um well not emotions but you know just it was kind of mental it's you know psychological and i really liked it 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 was it was great i really liked it I finished reading The Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is book two in her Farseer trilogy. Now in book one we get to meet Fitz who is the bastard son of the king in waiting and once his father realizes that he has fathered a bastard he abdicates his position and basically leaves Fitz to be raised by one of his men in the castle stables. Uh, now at first we see Fitz run uh, pretty wild but later on the king takes an interest in him and once Fitz pledges his allegiance to him he is apprenticed to the current uh, uh, assassin and you know he's basically a royal um, apprentice assassin which is the title of book one um, now in book two we get to see Fitz deal with the consequences of book one what you know what happened in the end of book one and um, it's actually pretty hard for him uh, in this book we you know we see him being pulled and pushed in every which direction depending on who you know he's dealing with there's a lot of plotting and a lot of intrigue and a lot of secrets being kept and Fitz uh, tries to navigate those waters and he's still a teenager basically so you know sometimes he makes decisions without actually thinking about the consequences and that gets him in trouble often uh, so this, people said it's a slow-paced book and yeah, it's, there's not a lot of action. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of plotting and, you know, conspiracy stuff, uh, but not action, you know, fighting and all that. So in that regard, it is a slow book. There's some repetition, but I didn't find it to be, you know, annoying or anything. Um, and actually it was a, I read it pretty fast, you know, if I, uh, it was a quick read. It wasn't, uh, it just... It just pulled me in from page one, which is, I have to say, this is the first book this month that did that. And I really enjoyed it, and I just really love uh, Robin Hobb's writing. I love Fitz and the rest of the characters. And, uh, yeah, I, I I had no problems reading this book at all. I just, if I had more time, I could read it even faster, I think. So, uh, I didn't have those problems at all. And if you're into fantasy and, uh, you know, want to give it a go, 
maybe pick these books up. They're fantastic and I just love them. Now, after reading The Royal Assassin, I was really curious how Fitz's story ends and that's why I decided to pick up The Assassin's Quest, which is a chunk of a book. It's 850 pages and I read it in four days. It would probably be faster, but at some points it did drag. Uh, the beginning part was really slow for me. I didn't like how uh, Fitz was at that time. I know, um, but you know, given what happened to him in the previous book, it was understandable, but still, the beginning was really slow for me and uh, after that the story really picks up and I was really into it. Uh, I really liked, you know, this is sort of a road trip <laughs> quest thing and I really liked it. We get to see a lot more of the the six duchies and even the mountain kingdom and it was really interesting and then sort of towards the end of the middle it started dragging a bit again for me. Uh, but I really like the end then. Um, as I said, we get to see a lot more of uh, the country, the world. Um, Robin Hobb really surprised me at some points because she manages to uh, manage to incorporate some things that I definitely didn't expect to to be there. And I really liked it how she did that. Um, there were also a few plot points or threads or just uh, you know things that she mentions, and we get to explore shortly but then just sort of get forgotten. So I'm not sure if that's, you know, going to be explored in the future because I would definitely be interested to see uh, more of um, some other parts of this world. You know, for those who read it, you will maybe know what I'm talking about, uh, but I do not want to spoil anything. Um, actually, I will be making a non spoilery review of the whole trilogy and I will be linking it up uh, in the card sim symbol, which is going to be uh -huh, here and down in the description box. Uh, yes, I really like this trilogy. Uh, it's really easy to get into. The world is pretty similar to ours, so if, you know, if you're afraid of fantasy books, don't be. It's, uh, it's really an easy world to get into. Writing is great. The characters are fantastic, really flawed, human, you know, there's and they're really well developed and I, I enjoyed it so much and I will definitely be continuing on with you know the books in this uh, realm uh, of the elderlings uh, I need a bit of t uh, rest now but uh, you know a month or two and I will be picking up the next trilogy definitely finished reading Carrie by Stephen King and before I dive into this book just let me tell you a brief history of me and Stephen King now when I was a kid I watched it on TV it was a TV show or a movie or whatever and it scared me half to death it was horrific and gruesome and uh, I still don't like clowns and it basically like imprinted in me that that is Stephen King and that he's definitely not from me so despite the fact that I had Cujo and Pet Cemetery at home I actually gave them away because I figured I'm never gonna read that and uh, yes for the longest time I didn't and then uh, years back I started watching Under the Dome and then Haven or the other way around and I you know realized that Stephen King is not all horror all the time and uh, I decided to give him a go when Mr. Mercedes came out now it wasn't the best mystery book out there but it was good and it got me interested and a few years passed again and I met Amber here on booktube and you know if you know her you know that she's a huge fan of Stephen King and one day we were chatting and you know she suggested that we buddy read this book uh, and that's exactly what happened. Now I will be linking her channel down below and you go check her out if you don't know her yet. She's a great booktuber, a great girl and you know definitely you should subscribe to her and um yeah, do that. And anyways, Carrie, Carrie is uh, a book about Carrie, surprisingly. And Carrie is a teenage girl who is having a hard time at school because she's sort of an outcast. People don't like her, they bully her, they're being mean to her. And her home life is bad, her mother is a religious fanatic and it's not really helpful to Carrie because she's desperately trying to fit in and be accepted and um, it sort of clashes with her mother's teachings uh, so you know she's sort of divided and then uh, a certain thing happens at school and people are being extra mean to her and uh, after that we sort of get to explore her power because you know for anyone that knows this book she has telekinesis and um, after that surprisingly things look like they're gonna turn for the better but they don't and, you know, that's the story of Carrie, uh, basically, just, you know, without me spoiling too much. Uh, now, regarding Carrie, there were parts of this book where I really empathized with her. Um, empathized? Empathized with her. Um, and then, you know, she did things that were beyond my understanding completely. And I was just like, what the hell? You don't have to be 
doing that or going that far or you know anything there are other ways to solve this other ways to deal with this but yeah she she went there and she did stuff that i definitely do not approve of uh now maybe some parts of it are gruesome there's a lot of blood definitely uh so if you're um you know touchy in that regards maybe don't give it a try um but you know this book was first published in 74 so sort of i think that we are more um used to blood and gruesome stuff than those generations were uh, at that time so it wasn't that bad um i didn't find it scary as i said there were gruesome points but uh, despite that it was um i managed to read it and enjoy it uh, you know but in reading it with amber it was great we would discuss it and it just you know you see different stuff than you you read and it's a great uh having a buddy to to do that with uh so yeah uh it wasn't my favorite book uh it wasn't the best book uh if you ask me but i definitely will be picking pillow and i definitely will be picking more of stephen king up uh again because it got me interested in him and uh yeah i cannot wait to give him another shot again so let's talk about The Gospel of Loki by Joanna M. Harris. This book has been on my TBR for the last three months and I have been actually reading it and I'm like halfway through it. And uh, for those who have uh, not heard of it before, this is basically Norse mythology told from the standpoint of Loki. And uh, the thing is, I, I'm really enjoying the writing style. It's really great. I have read uh, Joanne Harris's books before and I really enjoy them. But for some reason, I cannot get into this one. And honestly, I still think the problem is Loki. He's uh, always complaining. You know, everybody's always against him. They hate him. They don't like him. They don't accept him. And he's always uh, shunned and alone. And he's always plotting against them and he's always the victim and he's just annoying to read uh, at least I find him that way so I'm officially DNF in this book and uh, I will be selling it probably and hopefully finds an owner that can appreciate it uh, but yeah I'm done with it I am done with it I'm really I I want to read the books that I want and this apparently is not one of them so I'm really happy how October turned out. It was a great reading month. I actually stuck to my TBR, which was great. And I even enjoyed most of the books. Uh, well, I didn't enjoy Loki, but that's nothing new. Uh, I uh, actually added a couple of books in and I enjoyed those as well. I had my first buddy read, which was awesome. And I cannot wait to do more. Uh, so all in all, I'm really happy. And uh, let's see how November turns out. Thank you for watching this video and see you in my next one.